All right. So now we will be looking at uh, the the two methods uh, that have been assigned for you in the syllabus in terms of risk and uncertainty analysis. One of them is a risk analysis method and the other is uh, actually uh, an uncertainty analysis approach. So the first one is expected value, which is quite uh, easy and straightforward. Uh, EV is equal to sigma px. So it's essentially a long-term average, as I said. So if someone tells you uh, there's a 30% chance that the outcome uh, would be $50 and there's a 70% chance that the outcome would be, oh, okay. So let's take a look at this example here. Um, so what, what this actually means is that uh, whatever there's this particular business, and you have the potential NPVs and 30 and 70% as probability. So let's look at it this way. If you, uh, what they're saying is that if you do this project 10 times, then three out of those 10 times, the outcome will be a loss of $10,000. Three out of 10 times, 30% of the time, um, the loss, uh, the outcome will be minus 10,000. Seven out of those 10 times of repetitions that you're repeating this business or investment, you're doing the same thing, right? Seven times out of the 10, it will be 20,000 profit. So how do you get the average here? What you're going to do is three times into minus 10, three times into the loss of 10, plus seven times into the uh, 20,000. So that's the total possible outcome you divide it by 10 right you you average it that's what you get with sigma px you get the average uh, profit or average npv in this case which is uh, eleven thousand dollars you can do the math and see three into minus ten thousand uh, and uh, seven into twenty thousand would be uh, minus thirty thousand plus a hundred and forty thousand so that is a hundred and ten thousand you divide it by ten you get eleven thousand from the way I explained it. So what they've done is Sigma Px. They've applied the formula to get it. So understand this. Sigma Px is uh, simply the long-term average when you know the probability. It's very straightforward. When you know the probability, getting the average is very easy. So you just do that and you say, all right, so this is the potential outcome that uh, EV or this is the expected value uh, of this particular project. Now, because of the, the quantified nature of this approach, we generally say that this approach is used by risk neutral uh, decision makers. They are, they are people who, who rely on logic and numbers and you know probability theory and historical patterns and trends because this probability figure that you can see here, the 3070 would have identi would have been identified purely based on scientific approaches of looking at the past. Is it's 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 for repetitions, right? Like when you're watching a cricket match, uh, nowadays you get a lot of statistics saying there's a 70% chance this uh, team will win, 20% chance that this team will lose, etc., etc. There's a 30% chance that this bowler, if he bowls the fifth over, he'll get a wicket. Because what they've done is they've looked at all the occasions where that particular bowler has bowled the fifth over and got a wicket, and then identified this as a chance, as a probability. And the statistic gets better and better and better as more data, as more repetitions occur. That's what happens. So remember this. Uh, but uh, one thing is, of course, now in this example, even though our expected value, our p possible outcome from this particular approach is 11,000, you have to understand that 11,000 is not actual an actual possibility. It's just an average. It tells you toward which direction the NPV is more, uh, you know, more hanging toward. It doesn't tell you the exact actual possible outcome because the actual possible outcome could either be a minus, when you do the project, when you do the 11th repetition, as I said, uh, it could be either minus 10,000 loss or 20,000 profit. That's that's what could happen. That's That's the only two possibilities. But what the expected value tells you is uh, whether this is, you know, more uh, more toward the positive side or more toward the negative negative side. In this case, of course, there's a 70% chance, higher chance uh, of you gaining a profit and that to double the uh, loss you make uh, or double the 
a very low probability 30% probability of making a loss and the value of the loss it, itself is you know quite less uh, comparative to the profit that you're going to make so that you know makes this project a very viable one uh, potentially uh, looking at the expected value so someone who is risk neutral would look at this 11000 and say oh okay uh, it's more positive so therefore i'm going to do this i'm going to do this and take that chance Okay, so uh, just understand uh, expected value in that sense. Um, so here it's important. They say that this technique would not be useful for decisions which occur only once. As I said, if it's uh, something like the fire brigade catching fire, not going to work. EV is only applicable to things that are repetitive. If the probabilities and the values of the outcomes are not known, and uh, for a non-risk neutral decision maker, this is not good. For someone who has a particular appetite of risk, this approach doesn't really work well for them. Then what works? That's the question. What do you apply when there is uncertainty, uncertainty around uh, particular decisions? That's where the MM techniques come into play. So before we talk about the MM techniques, you have to understand uh, there are three kind of risk appetites. One is risk seeker. There are people in the world who, who are willing to go the highest distance, who are willing to take risk, risk seeker. There are people in the world who are risk averse. They don't like risk. They are they're happy with little as long as they get something. They don't like to lose. So that risk, that's risk averse. And then there are people who, 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 are, who are still risk averse. This is a third category. But who are opportunists in the sense that they are not really concerned, they are not risk averse in the traditional sense, saying it's okay if I get something, even if it's little. That's not what they say. They say, whatever happens, my loss, right, I shouldn't regret. Whatever happens, I shouldn't regret my decision. I shouldn't lose in such a way that I have to regret. So for them, it's not about making little money. For them, it's about minimizing the regret that they would have because the the idea is this if you're going to lose then you are going to regret naturally for them that's how they think if you're going to lose then you will regret it so then um, what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at all the possibilities where i would lose okay which means that i'm looking at all the potential regrets and i'm going to minimize that regret i'm going to go for the option which would minimize my feeling regretful of having made that decision in the first place. So that's that's the the third way of thinking. Okay, so now let's let's come back to uh, what our core discussion. If you are a risk seeker, you're using Maximax. Fairly straightforward. You maximize your maximum outcome. So what happens is you you look at all the possible outcomes and uh, you go for the maximum one, right? And you take the highest risk. And you never know whether it's going to happen or not. You don't know whether the probability is low or high. You don't really care even. You're just going to go for it and see what happens. Because you are a risk seeker. If you are a risk averse person, you go for maxi min. So that is, you don't look at the highest returns. You look at the lowest possible outcomes. If I do this, what's the lowest I'm going to get? If I do that, what's the lowest? Out of those lowest, what is the better lower? Bigger, or what is the maximum lower so max you try to maximize your minimum outcome that's plain and simple very straightforward risk covers you are you're you're not thinking about making a lot you just don't want to lose so what do you do you look at all the minimum amounts you can make and then you go for the better of those maxi min so maxi max and maxi min are for risk seeking and risk covers people now that third category i said about regret that's where Minimax regret comes in. They don't necessarily look at the lowest outcomes. They look at the regret. They look at, what if I do this decision? What's my, what, uh, compared to the best decision I could have made, how much am I losing? What's the difference? So if I, if I can sell a product for $40, $50, and $60, let's say I sold it for $40. i am going to make a certain outcome, right? If I sold it for $40, at that point, at the point of having sold it for $40, I would know whether my decision was right or wrong. 
correct after you make the sale after it happens you know whether you made the right decision or not at that point you see did i make a right decision was my decision of selling for 40 the right decision or not so if to if it was wrong then you are you are regretting something you are regretting saying oh i could i should have sold it for 50 because i sold it for 40 i i only made this much so you are looking at the difference of the profit you could have made so you do that for all the potential outcomes um which we call the maximum regret and then you try to decide on the 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 lowest possible uh, figure among those so what you are doing is you are looking at minimizing your maximum regret you identify your maximum regrets for all the decisions you can make and then you try to minimize those now i know verbally explaining them is is not the best approach uh you can try this example illustration it's fully done uh, try it out um, we can discuss any concerns that you have uh, in the live session um all the workings are done so you can try it out if you understood the maximum regret concept then uh, understanding this is easy um see what you are seeing here is the if i briefly explain what what is happening is supply right supply is the decision here in this example so you can either supply 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 that's what they mean here you can either supply 40 it's your choice you can either supply 40 50 60 or 70 so in each of those decisions there is a demand level for your supply there's a demand level where your decision is the right decision when you let's say you there's a particular day where you decided to sell 50 salads okay what's the demand level that makes your decision right the demand level is 50 on a day where you chose to sell 50 salads if 50 people came to buy perfect right you you manufactured 50 you sold 50 that is the point we call the decision is right see right decision 50 supply 50 demand perfect ideal that is the point where you have no regrets but but on any other if your demand level was anything else but 50 on a day where you had supplied or where you have 50 salads on display if your demand on that day was 40 or 60 or uh, 70 any of those demand levels you are going to regret it if it was 40 you are thinking i wasted 10 because i manufactured 50 i had 50 ready but only 40 came regret if you get 60 customers then what's your regret you are regretting that i had to turn away 10 people because you only made 50 salads you had to ask the last 10 customers to to say you had to say sorry to them regret i oh, i could have done that i could have manufactured 10 more why didn't i do it regret if it was 70 70 customers came to you that day on a day where you had 50 ready still regret uh, now the regret is bigger because you are thinking oh if i had 20 more salads i would have made more money those are the points where you can see what your opportunity cost is what is the opportunity you lost right by having to turn away 10 customers i lost this much or by uh, manufacturing more than what was needed i lost this much because you have to throw them right so the cost is a loss so you look at each of those and you try to identify for each of your decisions what your maximum regrets are and then you minimize it in this case it's 60 dollars you minimize that and that means you will uh, because your maximum regret is minimized at 60 dollars at a choice of 40 what you're going to do is you're going to supply 40 salads so as you can see it is again a risk averse position right you're not going for the higher figures you're not going for the higher numbers because the regrets are bigger and you don't like regrets if if that is the position that is the risk appetite so remember this uh try out the example definitely but what you have to remember is that ev and uh, ev is for risk analysis and mm techniques are for uncertainty analysis ev is when you know the risk know the probability mm techniques when you don't that's uh, just how you have to understand um 
and on that note uh, we are wrapping this segment up i will i will see you in the final and and small component of uh, risk and uncertainty thank you <laughs>